Right, guys, welcome. This is going to be a fairly short video on really Chapter 5, Section 3 out of the Advanced Book, National State and Diplomacy, really setting the stage for World War I. Start with a couple definitions. Uh, diplomacy, multiple definitions, really the number one, you got the conduct by government officials of negotiations and other relations between nations, how nations interrelate and interact with one another. The science of, of conducting such negotiations and really what we're talking about here is skill, the skill in managing these negotiations. You have to think about what that means. What does it mean to manage and negotiate, uh, manage negotiations or handle people? Uh, this is what Otto von Bismarck was really adept at. He was a skilled negotiator and manager. And this is when we talk about Bismarck and Realpolitik, his politics of reality. This is what he was good at. He was really a master of diplomacy. An alliance, very short definition, but you need to know it, is a formal agreement between or a treaty between two or more nations, really to cooperate for specific purposes. In this context, the alliance system is one of the main causes of World War I. The way it worked, if I was in an alliance with another, uh, another country, and an enemy of that country mobilized against them, I would be obligated to mobilize my troops and get ready to go to war. Once you're in an alliance system, it's incredibly inflexible, and you can get drawn into conflicts that you really had nothing to do with, and that is what World War I is all about. So it really gets down to Bismarck. Once Bismarck and Kaiser Wilhelm unified Germany in the 1870s, they became such a powerful state that it upset the balance of power in Europe. Bismarck, being a master of diplomacy, arranged defensive alliances with Austria-Hungary. In other words, they would come to the defense of Austria-Hungary. Italy joined this alliance, and what we have is one half of the, of the belligerents in World War I, the Triple Alliance. So you do need to know that Triple Alliance, Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy. During the war, they were known as the Central Powers because obviously they were in the center of Europe. Now, meanwhile, Bismarck signed a separate treaty with Russia, which was something that was not really done with the Germans. This gets down to some ethnic racism, really. The, the Germans looked down upon the Russians who were Slavic, ethnically Slavic. And the Germans traditionally didn't want anything to do with them. They thought they were backwards and stupid and and Bismarck didn't care about any of that. He recognized Russia as a major power on their eastern border. He did not want to be threatened over there. And he signed a separate treaty with Russia. And it worked. And peace. Then Kaiser Wilhelm I dies. And his son, Kaiser Wilhelm II, takes over. Willie II is not... I mean, he's a competent leader, but he's not his father. And uh, he doesn't have the relationship with Bismarck that his father did. I think he actually felt a little overshadowed by Bismarck, and he ends up firing Bismarck, and he says, I can handle these, these diplomacy relations myself. Now, he is an innate racist. In other words, he, he has this racist anti-Slavic feelings, and he allows the Russia Treaty to dissolve. Most of these treaties were uh, limited by time. He'd sign, sign a treaty for a certain number of years. The treaty with Russia and Germany ran its course, Wilhelm, being a racist, uh, anti-Slavic person, did not think he needed to be allied with Russia, and that treaty dissolves. France immediately steps in and signs a treaty with Russia. And now Germany has big problems. They are surrounded on both sides by hostile countries. Great Britain joins her once hated rival here. So Great Britain and, and France, I mean, if you look at world history, you've hated each other for centuries. Britain who's also pretty practical with these matters, they join this Franco-Russian alliance and they form something called the Triple Entente. This is the other side of the World War I. They have a series of crises in the Balkans in 1908 all the way up to 1914 leads us directly to World War I, which we'll get into obviously in chapter, I believe it's chapter 8. But we're really setting the scene now and uh, you need to understand that, that World War I didn't just happen overnight. The, the pieces were in place well ahead of time. So looking at a map here, the two sides, you have the Triple Alliance in green, otherwise known as the Central Powers, and then the Triple Entente in orange. And if you look at Germany, Germany's got big issues, especially a little bit later on. 
look at this last slide. Belgium and the Netherlands join the triple and end up us. Belgium, actually they don't join the triple on top, but Belgium has a separate treaty with Great Britain. So if Germany invades Belgium, which end up happening, draws Great Britain into this war that we'll, we'll get into. But really, for Germany's sake, Germany's got huge problems because they have France, who's a big major country with a big army, and Russia, which is a gigantic country and a huge army, on both sides of their borders. Austria-Hungary, where it shares a border with Russia, its northern border is protected by its ally. Switzerland is neutral. Italy is part of the alliance. So Austria-Hungary strategically is in a much better position than Germany. But here we are in Europe. This is what it sits like really from uh, the middle, the late 1800s all the way up to World War I. And the sides are set for this epic conflict.